Uh, welcome to NAF's third Thursday meeting. We have Chase Fountain from Texas Parks and Wildlife. He is their chief photographer and going to have a boatload of images for us tonight. Uh, let's see, we have a couple of new folks in the, in the room and I'd like to welcome them. Uh, so, Chase, would you like to go ahead and take control of this and run the meeting from here? We can, sure. If you want it's me to. Show. All right. Where's my mark? Is this like, will, am I here? <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. All right, who's going to be my clicker? You going to be my clicker? Yep, sure. All right, let's do that. I'm kind of visual, if you get it. Hey, everybody on Zoom, can you see the, the slideshow presentation? Give me a yes or no, thumbs up. Yes, I can see it. I can see Excellent. it. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Yeah, if you can expand the screen and go to slideshow view, please. Yeah, it's not in slideshow mode. You're in presenter mode right now. While he works on that, let me just say thank you for letting me come tonight. Uh, I actually really do enjoy these things. Um, people over the, you know, I've been doing this for 30 plus years uh, for Parks and Wildlife, 18 years this October. Uh, I'm going to give you just kind of brief history of me. They said the day in the life of a photographer, but I kind of want to build that up because a lot of people do ask how I got started, why I got started, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to, if I'm speaking too fast, I'm just because I have a lot of information that I'm trying to squeeze in. But just say, and by all means, there's 62 slides. I'm going to try to go quick. However, if you want to ask me a question, if I don't bring something up, just raise your hand. I, I want to talk about it, okay? Especially if you want to know about what I was thinking, the photo technique, location, whatever. If I if I don't mention it or whatever, by all means, interrupt me. I don't mind. It's perfectly fine. So first of all, go ahead and hit the space bar for me, please. I have a little intro for everybody. Hopefully the sound's on. guys visit state parks state park passes anybody where's my space bar guy sorry you're doing good he's my av guy some some slides have multiple slides so a lot of people say what was my inspiration Honestly, it's just like everybody. I was exposed to the outdoors. My parents had a farm out in Chico, Texas. Anybody knows where that is? It's middle of nowhere. Uh, they had 10 acres, but they were surrounded by tracks of um, 600 acres plots. And I was allowed to go. You can go and hit the space bar as you want until we finish this out. I was did a lot of hunting, fishing, whatever. At the same time, though, honestly, click again, keep on going. Um, we had a my family had a beach house in Galveston, so I was spending a lot of time in the summer fishing, doing whatever. But at the same time, at my grandparents' place, they had the Texas Highways magazine and the National Geographic magazine, which I would just eat that up. You know, I just look at it. So if you juxtaposition of that experience with the magazine really just kind of fueled my ambition to be a photographer. My uncle was a photographer, so I used to go look at all his stuff. So moving forward, people say, what do I do? So if y'all don't know this, oh, go back one if you can. You got, you got ahead of myself. There you go. We have 13 divisions. I think there's 14 now, over 3,100 employees. Um, of course, y'all know what the game wardens are. Y'all have seen Lone Star Law, the show, correct? Y'all familiar with that one? It's on Animal Planet. It's pretty good. Produced out of New York, but it's still pretty good. Um, but we do have a television show that airs on PBS every morning, every Sunday at 9.30. If you don't watch the show, it's also a YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos on YouTube. I strongly recommend, recommend looking at it. But I support all these divisions, which is the game wardens, inland fisheries, coastal fisheries, wildlife division, even our legal department, you name it, I do it all. 
I don't claim to be the best photographer, but I wear a lot of different hats and I'm very versatile in what I have to do. I mean, literally one day I'll be taking just executive type portraits with a backdrop, or I'm in a suit doing a commission meeting, or I'm literally in a wetsuit in the swamp somewhere doing something else. So every day is a little bit different. But people always ask, what do I, this is my bag. That's my daily, that's my go-to, okay? It's in a backpack bag, Nikon D6. Everybody knows that camera. Love that camera, it's a workhorse. I have the Z7, which honestly I don't really like, but it does great for video. They make newer models now, which are better, but I talked to Nikon, I kind of complained. They, they said, oh, I know, I know. But my 810, I carry that. I love my 810 as well, that's a great backup. But all these normal lenses, you can look, just your, your basic lenses, your you know, 24 to 70, 70 to 200. My 1.8, my 50 millimeter, it's my cheapest lens. It's probably a $250 lens, but I love using it. I love it, because it's just shallow depth of field and it just looks different. Uh, obviously, I have a macro lens that I pull out. I kind of replace this now. I have a tilt shift lens. Does anybody have one of those? They're a pain, but they're very great to use, and they're great for macro too. You know, you just gotta really tweak them. Um, of course, uh, my, uh, and then I have the two to 400 lens, and I don't use it that often because it's that big, it's a pain, but I throw my 1.7 teleconverter on it when I'm doing birding or whatever, and it, it comes in real handy, so. And my DJI Phantom. Uh, I don't go on any photo shoots without my drone. Been doing it since I came out with them. I love them. So hundreds of hours on that thing. Uh, it's just part of my what I do. You can go forward. <clears throat> As far as published work, because of my job, I'm, I get a lot of published work. You can click on it and click again, click one more time. I've literally been on hundreds of magazine covers or whatnot, which is awesome. You know, it feeds my ego, great. Um, but it's just, it's a matter of access. I, like, I, I'll admit it, I'm not the best photographer out there. There's a lot of great people, but I have to work on timelines, deadlines, the least desirable elements, you got to make it work. And that's what happens, you know, obviously the covers are usually your better situations, but for your day-to-day -day grind, fulfilling deadlines, I mean, it's, it's, it's a crunch sometimes. So it can be very taxing. You can go ahead and go forward real quick. Oh, one more. That's another page. Um, I did a presentation before called Woods and Water, so I kind of stole some of the slides. So I'm just going to generically grab some imagery. Uh, if you want me to talk about them anymore, we can go, but let's just kind of pass on through. Woods. Very, so you can click the, the three more times, I'm sorry. These are just random shots that I did out in the field. Uh, Tyler State Park, that's Bastrop, believe it or not. Um, Angelina National Forest, I was there on an assignment. So in terms of photography, obviously you wanna look at different perspective. Sometimes your better shots are behind you, not directly in front of you. So when you're shooting, take a moment to look around. And when the lighting conditions or the things are more complicated, I tend to get narrower on my shooting scale. Does that make sense? Because if I had students, I would tell them, you have a, a 20 foot by 20 foot section, you can't leave that spot, give me a story on it. You, there is so much potential out there, you just have to learn how to find it. That's really important. People think sometimes they think too much, you just need to narrow your scope down. Uh, and y'all all know about the rule of thirds and composition and all that, so we don't really need to talk about that. Is that correct? We're good with that? Okay. When to break it. Huh? When to break the There's no rules. It's just suggestions, right? Uh, just a beauty shot. This was uh, Inspiring Oaks in Wimberley, Texas. I was just there. Beautiful sunset. Knocked it out. I shoot everything raw. Do y'all shoot things raw? Okay. You know, the, you know the advantages to that. So with Parks and Wildlife, we hunt, we fish, we camp, everything outdoors. So. I do a lot of hunting shots for promotion reasons or try to bring the people that don't hunt actively involved or promote. I mean, obviously you wanna sell it in the best light. I mean, there is real advantages to ethical hunting and whatnot, and that's my job is to bring that to the public. So you can go ahead. Different dove hunting. It's dove season is coming up next in a couple of weeks. You can keep on going. Uh, these are just random hunting shots. This was shot last summer, I mean, last dove season, opening day. Uh, this was Granger Lake. There's a game, Granger Lake WMA, not too far from where we live. If you've never been out there, it's 5,000 acres. You buy a permit, you can go there all year long. And you can hunt if, you, if that's something you want to do. You keep on going. Um, you can click again, that's fine. This was a different hunting campaign shoot that I did for the marketing. We have a marketing department as well. And when shooting editorial opposed to marketing ad type sh shoots, 
they're different in style. Does that make sense? So um, I will approach it differently, and and it can be pretty compli- difficult sometimes trying to bridge the gap between the two. Sometimes they overlap, but a lot of times they're very specific and neat. Uh, this shot, I got to tell you about this story. So this was for a marketing shoot for hunting. This is, oh, go back one. I, I don't mean to kill the joy of this shot. It was completely staged. And <laughs> the deal is, is this was in Smithville, Texas. Uh, we had a sunrise shoot scheduled. I'm rolling up, they're, in, they're already dressed and ready to go. I see the sunbeams going through the trees, and I literally, I don't even know if I put my car in park or my truck, I just jumped out and said, yeah, it's perfect, we're gonna do this. I go there and there, and I get real bossy when I shoot, because I don't, you know, because you know how light is, it's there and it's gone, right? So I'm saying, do this, 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 and, I, and, and I, to me it came out great. It just kind of sells the mood. And honestly, these guys are very, at, these weren't actors. Uh, this is uh, Johnny um, Smith, and I forget his name all of a sudden, I'll think of it, it's with a C, but they're very active hunters, so they, they weren't faking it, they were, that was them. And I'm sure they're really talking about the bow, because that's their, that's their equipment. So go ahead. Yeah. That was the same shoot, the same day. So we did that for one of the ad campaigns. This was in Texas Monthly, it was in, te- it was in our magazine, uh, some other media campaigns, so it, it kind of is like, Shoot once, publish everywhere. That's kind of the shot of it. And, and that was a game warden and his son. Uh, Jonathan Gray, which lives in Pflugerville, by the way. If you've never met him, you probably have. He's on Lake Pflugerville every day. Uh, this is just a different big time Texas hunting campaign. You can fly through these if you want. Random shots. Uh, I, I wouldn't say anything wonderful. This is Mason Mountain Wildlife Management Area. Uh, they have exotic animals there that is open to the public that, on a draw in order to hunt them. You can go ahead. They pay for it. But it raises money to support. It's, it's kind of a twofold thing. Do you, you know, people pay money, it helps pay for the resources and, the, and, and, and to maintain wildlife and whatnot. Just random turkey shots. Uh, this gentleman, he was a national wildlife turkey caller guy. Um, that's a thing, actually. Uh, he's kind of the top of the field of what he does, but that was for the magazine. You can go ahead. Same guy again, of course. Uh, this was the Kincaid Ranch in um, um, Uvalde, Texas. You can go ahead. Um, this was shot on a porch. No special lighting, just saw the nice light. There happened to be a, a cow hide there. They had all their stuff. I just threw it on there. That's it. Nothing else to it. Yes? Do you have an, an art director or, or producer that gives you a shot, shot list ahead of time? No, and yes. How's that? Depends on the story. What I do is I get the manuscript and I highlight all the things I think will be visually done. Does that make sense? However, if I don't have the manuscript, I have the writer give me a shot list what they think that will work, even though they haven't got all the words down on paper. Because I, I need to go off a shot list. And, may, and because why am I going to go spend three days in the field and not know what I need to photograph? So, but a lot of it's literally extemporaneous. I'm there, I see it, I shoot it. And when I'm in the field, I'm not only thinking about that assignment, I'm thinking about other, because it's just in t- institutional knowledge. I know since I've been doing this so long, hey, we may be doing something later. So, or something's unique to the point where I need to photograph it because I know it'll be used. So, you can go ahead. More of the same shoot. I'm going to move on. Yeah, that's the Kincaid Ranch. You can flash forward after this. Water, which we all need, clearly, right? So, these are just going to be a series of different water shots that I've done throughout the years. You can go ahead and go forward. Uh, this was done at, it was 27 degrees. It was cold. Matagorda Bay. But cold weather makes great, for, I don't know why, you probably know the reason as well. The, the, there's less particulates maybe in the air, things are crisper, but your photos come out so much sharper when it's nice and cool. So I took advantage of it. Uh, this was taken from one of our airplanes. I just happened to be and it looked good, so I liked the composition and the texture of everything, so I photographed it. That's just one morning at Galveston Island State Park. Uh, this shot, just so you know, think about this, a little pro tip. Good shot, good sunlight shot, right? Great. What I did is I put a neutral density filter on and shot it at 15 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, because you see the water's moving. 
It gives more separation. It makes it even that much more interesting. It's great on its own, but it's better if you just kind of give something a little extra. And that's something to think about, especially when you have a static object, but moving surroundings. If you want to just bring it out just a little bit more, I'd recommend that. Yes? Where's that That is Powderhorn. It, it's Powderhorn, it's not in existence right now, but it is. It's going to be public. It's actually going to be public in the very near future. We're working on it. But it's down by Sea Drift, Port O'Connor area. Uh, it's, going to be, um, it's going to be made to the public. Unfortunately, the boat is no longer there. It blew away. It blew up. Blew away. The hurricane came by and went away. But, that's, but using a neutral, do you all have a neutral density filter? Do you all carry one? Um, I recommend getting one if you don't, especially the one that's variable. They, they come in handy. Okay. Variety of water shots in the state of Texas. This is San Marcos. <laughs> uh, Gorman Falls. Have you all ever been to Gorman Falls? Gorman? Gorman Falls. It's at Colorado Bend State Park. You all have to hike there. It's about a mile hike. But uh, make sure there's water because things are pretty dry right now. But, um, and this one down here is Honey Creek State Natural Area, which is adjacent to Gua uh, Guadalupe River State Park. Uh, you do have to get a permit or at least the permission to go down there, but that's a great place to photograph as well. Okay. Uh, Garner State Park, who's all been to Garner? Everybody been to Garner? If you haven't, add it to your list. It's great. Uh, the water's cool, it's beautiful. You can hike up the top of the Old Baldy there. Uh, it's very picturesque. It's a very popular park. So make your reservations six months in advance if you can, uh, or more. I think you can do it up to nine months, but I totally, it's in, it's in by Utopia, over in that area. Um, I, I do have a lady friend that owns a house very close to there. If y'all need a, a, a Airbnb type thing, I can recommend that. But by all means, I, I do recommend that. And a little, little tip, if you can do this, and adjacent to it, not too far away, is Lost Maple State Park. And you go there in the fall time so you can get your fall foliage on both fronts. Um, that's a great twofer if you're going to be in the area. Same. Fishing. You know, we, we fish Texas Parks and Wildlife. It's fish, right? So I do a lot of fishing stuff. They have, fishing photo shoots are difficult. I don't know why, but you're usually in a confined spot. You're either on a boat, there's water. I've lost a $3,000 lens before falling off. So, but you can go ahead and go on in there. You can cycle through these if you want. It's just, just random stuff. This one I did a little bit edgier. I put that in Photoshop and I created layer mask and I was making it a little edgy so I did like a black layer on top of it and lower the opacity, increase the contrast. I was just, I just kind of tweaked it until I liked it. I wanted a little bit more edgy, you know? You can go ahead. Um, Sally, Sally Black, she's a fishing guide down in Baffin Bay. I just like the, this was all by design, by the, con you know, leading lines, leading to the subject. It all fits in well. Um, great ladies. Uh, just random shots along the bay. More of the same, you can keep on going. I, I like this shot simply because there's, you can't really see the horizon. I like the way everything blended is right at sunrise. I mean, I, to me, it's, I have this picture in my office actually. I, I like it, I don't know, it just kind of makes me happy. So uh, this was a tarpon photo shoot I did. We have tarpon in Texas, if you didn't know that, they're huge, they get up to six feet long. I'm about to show you, um, I just, the scales are fanatic. I mean, awesome. I love just the texture of the scales. There's one coming out of the water. And he's bigger than these tables. They're huge. It's pretty cool. Uh, I shot that from my drone. I'm literally along the, around here somewhere, about a mile away. Uh, like I said, I use my drone on all my photo shoots if I can because it's another tool in my bag. I mean, I really do like them. Uh, more fishing, I'm sorry, yeah. This was along the Padre Island National Seashore. Are y'all familiar with that? If y'all don't know what it is, it starts in Corpus Christi or south, Chris, north, south of Cor Corpus Christi, and it goes for about 60 miles along the beach from there almost to South Padre. It's a national park. It's very isolated. I have, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story that happened to me. <clears throat> I was doing a story, this story actually, 
and they, uh, sargasm, it's a seaweed that comes in, you know what I'm talking about? Well, it was coming in so much, they were really, it impeded my path to get to the end of the island. It was that thick and whatever. And um, it was literally three feet high. And if the bay, if the water, the beach had washed out, your car would literally just go down and get stuck. And there's no cell phone reception. You're literally isolated. And I got out to go take a picture of the sargasm from the water perspective, unbeknownst to me. I, knew, I, I put my key in my pocket. And my phone was getting wet. And I went to move things around. And I didn't know it, but I pulled my key out and it fell in the ocean. So I get back in my truck, and I'm doing this. and. So literally, I walked out to where I thought it was. I looked down just by the water started coming out. I saw it in the water. I pulled it out. So I mean, it was I mean, it was like 15 minutes later too. It was like insane. And there, I was miles from anybody. I mean, I was and the tide was coming in my water. My truck was right on the coastline. So it would have been sunk. So all right, go ahead. Enough story about that one. Um, this is a marketing campaign we did to promote uh, fishing in, on the coast. More the same, but that was a different article. That was uh, North Matagorda uh, Bay. Go ahead. Same shoot, same people. This guy, uh, y'all remember the Lonesome Dove, the book? Uh, the, his name, his last name is Reed. That's, his dad's the one that wrote that. So he's a, he's, a, he's a great guy. So go ahead. More of the fishing. Pro tip, I hate to say this. I picked up the fish from our hatchery because I wanted to make sure we had a fish. So I brought it with me. Sorry, I'm telling you all the tricks. It's, so go ahead. Uh, point and shoot cameras. It's a little Olympus camera I stuck in the water. They were doing, uh, this is a um, uh, Guadalupe bass release. Um, at, and then, oh, yep, that's fine. You go back. That's fine. But uh, this one is alligator gar. Are you all familiar with those? So, yes. Oh, um, Hong Kong Ripley's, believe it or not, like the photos, so they have it in their, their issue. I don't know why, but they do. More fishing stories. Um, this was a, at night. Is interesting. This was my intern, and this was one of our editors at the time. He was a professional angler, but this is on the uh, Lady Bird Lake, or the upper version of it. And... Um, I said, okay, get out here and go along the bank and, and catch a fish. And they really caught a massive fish right there in front of me. It was perfect. And I have lights set up in the boat to light everything up at the same time. So I, it was just one of those freak moments where I was able to get the shot. Okay, we move on. All right, this is my fun spot. It's hot. You don't want to be there in the daytime. So when it was, when, remember 2011 when we almost died? It was like 93 days of 100 degree heat. I wanted, I did, I went to, a, did a photo workshop on night sky photography. Anybody do, does that? Y'all like it? Y'all know it? You good at it? All right, good. I don't need to talk about it. No, but I will. Um, I, I went to, uh, their names, Scott is one of the guys' name. I have the book on file. Did a five-day workshop. Just because you know one aspect of photography doesn't really mean that you know another spot. So I thought hey, why not learn from these guys? So I went out and spent five days in Big Ben, and I learned their tips and tricks on doing night sky photography, which I've kept with me ever since. And I strongly recommend it. And it's fairly simple once you learn it. But I'm going to briefly go over the three types of night sky photography. Uh, obviously, we know star stacking, star points, and star trails. OK? So uh, let me, this is one of my favorite shots. So this was shot at Big Ben Ranch State Park. Um, I purposely knew where the North Star was, mapped it out. I knew the moon rise was going to come in some spot. So what I did is this is a star stacking shot, which means it's, for this one, it's about 30 images stacked on top of each other, compressed in a single image. And each image is roughly about six and a half minutes long. Okay? So do the math. So what I did on my first image is I light painted the scene. So I, I, did my composition, got all my settings correctly, and we can go, we can spend an hour just talking about this one shot. But what I did is I painted this, I walked inside, got a different color filter. Actually, I used a candle from Walmart. You know those little lighted candles, you flick them on? I just walked around the edge and, and did, all, did this. And then I got a little flashlight with an amber gel, and I just kind of painted it and walked around. Came back, didn't move the camera, looked at it, said, okay, that looks good. 
and then I used an intervalometer. Do you all have one of those? Basically, it's a, it's a shutter release, but you can program it to do a series of photos. And basically, this was roughly a six minute exposure. I manually set all my settings and hit play, step back for the next hour and let it do it. And then I came back and I used Dr. Brown's, um, it's called Dr. Brown's Image Stacker. You can go online, look at it, it's a free download, put it on there, drag your images in. You can do it in Photoshop too, but you just, it layers them up, boom, it's done. A uh, nice thing about the program is that everything's in layers. So a car drove through in the, in the distance and I was able to go through and to see race the car light. And then it just didn't see it. So, and then I merged everything together into a single file and that's what came out. Next one, Star Trails. This is just your generic five, six to seven, eight minute um, shot. Basically, oh, go back one. You get movement, but you're only getting that one frame. Pro tip, if you want to know how long to do an exposure, if you want to do a long exposure with a lower ISO, what you do is you set your ISO camera to your native ISO. Let's just say 100. 100 for Canon, 200 for Nikon. Let's just say for Canon, 100. Turn your ISO up to 10,000. Hold it for however many seconds you think. Let's just say start around five seconds. It's gonna be grainy, it's not gonna look good, don't worry about that. That'll tell you how many minutes you need to expose the image for. Does that make sense? It's that simple. So, it, it's a cheat sheet, it's your camera cheat. So, that's what you do. And then you roll, dial your camera back down to 100 ISO. Uh, and then, oh, F8 by the way, F8, 5.6. This is not a 2.8 shot, different shot, okay? So think about that. This is an F8 or an F5.6. So if you, if you want to go to the next one, this is the easiest of them all. The, all you need is a tripod and you're, you're, you're golden. Um, all you guys have more modern cameras, cameras now. The olden days, you used to say, oh, maybe 16 hundredths of a ISO. 1600 ISO at 2.8 for 20 to 30 seconds. Does that make sense? Um, now, now our cameras, we can dial them up to 6400 and probably do half the time. It's just that simple. I mean, it's, it's, it's super simple. So um, here I'm light painting. This was just natural light that was in the tent. Um, Davis Mountain State Park, if y'all haven't been there, I recommend that. That's Davis Mountain, actually. That's my tent. I was literally camping there. Uh, oh, that's Davis too, so three for three on that one. But um, star point shots, are, to me, are very simple. They impress everybody. Uh, all you just need is a good tripod and a, a decent lens, and you're ready to go. Okay? Wildlife. Parks and wildlife, right? Has a red wolf in captivity. Sorry, I spoiled that one, but go ahead. Um, there's just going to be a variety of wildlife shots. I wouldn't say they're overly wonderful. They're just... just pretty shots. One thing about wildlife shots, who's really into that? Anybody here? You got birders that love birding. That's Mason Mountain. That's that wildlife management area. That's um, South Llano River State Park. Okay. That was off the highway, off Highway 7 going to East Texas one day. There was a bunch of turkeys. They didn't care. So, variety of different shots, different areas. This was a bighorn sheep release in Big Ben. Uh, that was actually, there was a, outside of Blanco, there's a, um, a rehab facilities for wounded or animals that have been taken out of service for different reasons and they, the bear was there. Uh, that was a uh, or, completely organic shot out of Mason, Texas. I loved it. I loved the jackrabbit. I liked the look and everything. Ironically, I was flipping through and they had some contest in West Texas and it won first place. And somebody took in my, taken my picture and used it as an entry. And, oh, well, I, I, I called him out on it. He got barred for life, but yeah. He, no, he said he took it. It was my shot. He just flat out just said it was his. And he won first place and won prize money. Yeah, yeah, he did. No, nah, I don't care. But the point was, I just didn't like that. Because I, I found it in an ad or something online. I go, what? So people still have pictures all the time. Okay. But uh, same Mason Mountain, go ahead on that one. A uh, variety of different shots, different scenarios. Okay, you can go hit one more time, I'll show you this. Oh, one more. I'm gonna do another pro tip, you're gonna hate this idea. 
Nice quail shot, right? They fly, they move, they don't get around. Well, we had a quail, and we put it in a burlap bag, and you spin it around a few times. I know. <laughs> And they stay there for about 10 minutes. But it doesn't hurt them. It just misses their, their equilibrium off. So I know, I'm ruining everything. I'm like the mutual of Omaha guy that brought the rabbit out of the thing in the woods. But unfortunately, but that's, that's my last cheat. Well, butterflies, you can put butterflies in the refrigerator. And it, yeah. Well, they don't, they, they, they stay there for a while. So they have to warm up. <laughs> I, I, maybe I shouldn't be telling all these stories. Right, you can go ahead. You're going to get phone calls made on you. Um, a, a, a dragonfly, I was doing an alligator shoot and a beautiful dragonfly, and they end up, you hit one more time, they end up using it to cover for the Texas Master Naturalist. Or any of you all Texas Master Naturalist? So, yeah, that book's uh, it's still out there. Devil's River, most pristine part of Texas. If you've never been there, you should go. It's between Del Rio and... Langtree. There you go, Langtree. Yeah, that's a great, great way to put it. So, beautiful, beautiful section of, the, uh, of Texas. You can go ahead. Black Gap Wildlife Management Area. It's right at sunset. That's completely legitimate. It was amazing. Uh, recommend going there. It's just right before you get to Big Bend National Park. It's right to the left. If you've never been to Big Bend, have, have anybody ever, have y'all been to Big Bend? Yes or no? Raise your hands real quick. Yeah. All right, let me tell you about Big Bend. And, and people that have been there, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Okay, and the nice thing about Big Ben, it really humbles you, because you think I sprained my ankle and there's nobody around, I'm gonna die. You know, I mean, it's really, you're very isolated there. There's some extremely isolated spots. I do recommend going in either in October, November, or February, March. Don't go now. Uh, that's not it, huh? I, I wouldn't do that. All right, since we got uh, technical issues, let's, questions, questions, comments. Yes, sir. So when you get an assignment, do you go through your catalog first to see if you can fill it first? Or do you... Yes and no. Depends if it's been used. I try to get new content. Um, we do have an editorial catalog that's a year in advance. So I like to shoot in the season that it's going to publish. So if it's October, I like to shoot in October for October's issue. Uh, I, we've been burned a bunch of times trying to... and. There's more times than not where we're missing a hole and I need to go out there literally the day before it needs to go to print and getting the shot and getting it out. But, um, but did that answer your question? And then the other question I had is, um, so when you do your photos, who does the talking about? You or Texas Parks? Texas Parks and Wildlife. I do not own my copyright. I have portfolio rights. I can show it all day long, but I just can't use it to make money off. They own it. They really do. Yes? I'm sorry, what? It's kind of like picking your favorite kid. Who's your favorite kid? Actually, I, the answer is no. And I knew somebody was going to answer that question. What my, my favorites are the moments. I don't live for the park. I live for the moment. And so every park or every experience is, has a different thing. Some parks are easier to photograph because of the natural aesthetics of it, like Big Ben Ranch State Park, for example, uh, Lost May, they're, they're all different in many ways. Um, so, to answer, Garner's also a great park, but it's over, it's, but I like that for my family. You know, I like the camp, you know what I'm saying? So it just depends. So I don't know if I, did we, we good? You're wrapped up, just so you know. It's hot in here, but we got to get used to that. That slide should be used right here. Not now. Not uh, now. From, from slide, from current slide. There we go. I think you hit the space bar now and it should do the trick. Okay, you can go forward. 
So, um, obviously I support law, law enforcement. I do all their uh, marketing shots. I also do first responder type stuff. So this, this, this is a quick example that I did this last October at Palo Duro and Canyon. Um, so, you know, it seems like every time they change uniforms, they get a new style of uniform, they want to update everything. But they do use it for recruitment purposes, pers purposes and PR. So I, 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 I love them because they helped me out. One time I was stranded in uh, the middle of nowhere and I said, can I have a helicopter to come get me? And they were actually gonna come get me two hours away. Uh, I was able to get out of where I was, but it was nice to be able to pick up a call and get somebody to come get me. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't pay for it. Oh, no. You want to talk about money. Let me go forward one more slide. I think it's the next one. I'm not sure. You hitting the space bar? Oh, one more time, I think. Um, so these are just a variety of different shoots that I do. So, you know, we do, uh, this is during a flood. This was during a training exercise. We have an underwater team. Uh, these are used for different purposes, marketing or whatever. Uh, they use them for social media too. Okay, you can get, go for it. I'm going to tell you about this shot. So I'm, what you don't see here, that in a minute there's a Coast Guard frigate that comes in behind them and all that. So I'm hanging out of one of those Navy helicopters, the Coast Guard helicopters, the, the, the orange and white one, right, on the skids, doing this, telling the pilot to tell everybody else what to do. And you can't see the frame, but the Lexington's behind it. But um, I was just in my, if I had any idea how much money was being spent to create this photo, the, now the feds paid for this shot because it was done through NASBLA, which is a national campaign, but it was, it was quite an intense shoot. So uh, it was a lot of fun though, I, you know, hanging out of a helicopter like that. Okay. Uh, oh, go back one. Um, this was, uh, it, it's, it's just more, um, Unfor well, not unfortunately, but we do Border Patrol. That's part of their federal requirements that we do. This was last December when I went down. Um, this is kind of militaristic. They're not as military. This is the ROG team. This isn't really out for the public, but you know, this is more for recruiting. But, uh, but they do river posts and they do um, in the woods as well or along the, the border. Okay. Uh, this is what it looks like. I'm going to finish the, the marketing materials. This is State Park Police. This was a different ad campaign, but we do have... Every state park has one or two police officers. So, uh, and all in all, I think we have close to 600 police officers. Okay. Or game wardens. Um, I didn't make this very good, but obviously it's not about the game wardens. There's a lot more to state parks. We have a bunch of different divisions. You just start clicking through. Oop. I, I didn't do well on the, um, on the slide. We have biologists, you can go ahead and hit one at a time, it doesn't matter, you can cycle through them. Uh, outreach people, um, yeah, I did not do well on the slide, my, my, my apology. You keep on clicking. There's gonna be like eight different images, so. Uh, this is our new executive director, David Yoskowitz. He's a, he's a great guy. Uh, he's a, um, an economic, uh, economic, uh, economist by trade, but he's, he knows what he's doing. Wildlife management, you can go ahead and yeah, this did not cycle. Well, I'm sorry. You just keep on clicking. Okay. There's a delay. Sorry. Oh. So we're losing them. We can probably get out of that slide. Sorry, people. Is it going off the thing, or did y'all download it? They're, they're just, it's off the oh. I should have Customer service. Okay. So I do news and events. We have a news team. So I am a journalist. So we do uh, floods, fires. Hurricanes, well, there'll be a hurricane here. Uh, and of course, what we're going through right now, or soon to be, oh no, legislative Senate hearing type stuff, I do that, and droughts. And then news conferences, which are gonna be the next one, I believe. So we do, I do stuff like that, okay? You're on call for that. Huh? You're on call for those things. All the time. All the time. Yeah. I, I like to do this in my bird's eye view. I just did a few images that I shot with my drone. You can cycle through these if you want. This is HEB. HEB owns that piece of property. It's a foundation they have outside of San Antonio. It's for underserved kids in the communities, and they do thousands of kids every year to expose them to the outdoors. It's a great program. Uh, fishing. Oh, that's when I got in trouble. I told you I got in trouble with the national parks. I was doing that when I got in trouble. Austin, I shot that uh, last summer. Uh, Devil's River again. 
and everything has to end, so that's the end of my presentation, I believe. And click question and answers. There we go. I, I, my hearing is horrible. You have to speak up. No, I ran into repair the other day at the airport, and I hit him in the shoulder. And uh, um, I said, and he's looking at me. He goes, I know you, I know you, I know you. But I, so I saved the misery, and I told him who I was. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. So we talked for about five minutes. But uh, I, 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 I'm not political. I, I, in my personal life, in my professional life, I don't, I, I schmooze, and that's what I do. I don't care, you know, like, I love Ann Richards. I got along with her. Uh, the both Bushes, I've, photo, I've photographed everybody that's been the governorship since. Bill Clements, actually, I photographed him. So I've been around for a while. Well, he wasn't there when I was there, but you know what I'm saying. But, yeah. Yes? So, what would you recommend as the closest place in Austin for a decent night sky in the Um, Go online. We have, it's called the Night Sky Initiative. I would look and see what's available. However, um, Enchanted Rock is a great night sky. <laughs> You know I was going to say that, didn't you? Is that too far? What's that? Enchanted Rock, is that too far for you? You want it closer? No, I've been there done that. I was looking for some other ideas. Well, okay. You all are familiar with the annual eclipse coming up, right? So I'm going to be somewhere for that. Probably, <laughs> probably Enchanted Rock. I mean, and I'm going to, unfortunately, the annual eclipse at 100% is going to be at right at noon. So it's going to be a very vertical shot. But I wanted to get a shot where I could see the ring of the sun and, you know, just with the moon, with somebody stargazing, more or less. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to be shooting almost vertical, so I don't know how I'm going to do that. I was going to ask, what are you going to put in the foreground? Huh? What are you going to put in the foreground? People. I want, I want people in the foreground with a telescope or something looking up. And I was thinking Enchanted Rock would work because I could literally get below them and shoot in that angle. Uh, that's, that's my thought. So we'll see. But I'm sorry? An ND10 for sure. So just a neutral density filter. So. Am I going to what? I don't know. I went on Nikon's website and they gave a little in in tutorial on how they did it. Right. So I'm not claiming that I'm reinventing the wheel. I'm going to figure out how somebody else did it and just replicate it. I mean, exactly. honestly. I've I been mean, doing some homework on that. And it looks like ND16 is where you need to be. The people are going to be completely silhouetted. I'm okay with that. But there's a great shot on the Nikon website where they did an annual eclipse, and I said, I want it, but it was with a camel. So I, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to try. And make enough room for copy for a masthead, huh? Which website? Nikon. 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 I went to their website and said annual eclipse or something, and it popped up and it kind of explained it. So we'll see. So, yes? What is your philosophy on like, processing? Do you do a lot in Photoshop or like? Philosophy in which way? Like the purest form, or what do you think? What, what, just your personal I, I honestly think the post processing is just as important as taking the image. I think if you're really good at that, you can really enhance a photo. I mean, obviously, you shoot it raw. And you make sure the composition, well, you can make the composition better, obviously, if you know the general or suggested rules. Um, but um, I, I, for every hour that I photograph, I probably spend at least an hour editing, I mean, as a general rule. Uh, and anybody that ever, unless you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars teaching photo classes, anybody that says they're an expert at Photoshop is either delusional or they're lying. I mean, honestly. I mean, I learn something new every day. I mean. Who doesn't use YouTube? Oh, like, for example, we're um, National Photography Day is coming up this weekend. I don't know if y'all know that or not. So I said, hey, I want my image to look like a daguerreotype. Well, how do I do that? So I went to YouTube and just figured all the steps out and created a photo and sent it off to our media team to post it. And um, it wasn't difficult if you knew what to do, but, you know, um, but I... But to answer your question, I think, I think uh, my philosophy is yes, more the better. Okay? So, and unfortunately, AI is really coming into play right now. Have you all seen that or talked about it yet? You can literally, there's platforms now where you can explain it. You tell it to make you a photo, 
and give it descriptive language, and it literally will create that image for you. It's, it's, it's creepy. And it's going to be like, what's really real anymore? Because it, it really looks real. Is there a role for amateur photography in the magazine? Always. We, we do state park. How can we get it? Well, you have my card, obviously. OK, all you guys have taken wonderful pictures, right? You got presentable, marketable. There is an ethics thing. So I know Sonia probably mentioned this. She doesn't like taking stuff for free. She'd rather pay. And unfortunately, sometimes we're constrained by budgets. However, we do do photo contests. And those photo contests, there's usually a stipulation on there that's saying, hey, if we select your image, we'll have the right to publish. And you can do that. But I'm all for entries. You know, I mean, it, what's different for me is that I'm usually on a timeline or, a, you know, I've got to get it out. You know, it's got to, got to be it. But, uh, but all y'all probably taken better pictures than I've taken, or equal. You know, it's, it's just, and you know what? Honestly, when I go on vacation, I use my phone. I don't even take a camera anymore. We've had covers, that, uh, back covers that have been used in there. And it's not uncommon for me to bring out a phone when I'm on a location shoot. Now, it doesn't do as well in low light situations or whatever, but if it's a, if you need something with a lot of kind of HDR feel and it knows how to do, do all, you, you know, I'll, why not, you know? I've actually done one competition with uh, phone images only. I, I strongly recommend that, yeah. And there's some great stuff on social media that you can learn on how to do portraits, and you, know, you shoot it in portrait mode, you can make some adjustments, and, and it's a step, it's like a, I, I did that the other day, like a 10 step process where you can make really good looking portraits of people, you know? I mean, they're, they're you know, when you use, you know, my Nikon D6, it's a workhorse. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful camera, and it has a lot of information in my files, and, and, you know, I can shoot at really high ISOs. I hardly ever use a flash anymore. You know, I don't need to. So, yeah. Here Great. to answer questions. I know I didn't take my full hour. Did I talk too fast? <laughs> <laughs> any any questions online? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there was a recommendation that October 13th in San Antonio would be a good shot for the, for the uh, coming eclipse. Yes. I think I'm, but however, for me, I'm looking for something more in a state park. Uh, that's my, yeah, there's, if y'all, Texas is going to get, we're all going to get some really good annular eclipse stuff. And there's another one, I believe, in April. April Are they calling that an annular or is that a solar? It's a total. April is a total eclipse. Okay. Both of them run right through San Antonio. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. So, looking a lot of forward to it. Any night sky questions? Did y'all figure that out? What? Night sky, like night sky. star points, star trails, all that. A couple, of, a couple of really good people in the club. Do people love them. They go, "How'd you do that? It's awesome." So. So yeah, a good tripod, interlophilometer if you really want to do star stacking. A cable release, if not, at, at least minimum. So. Do you have other magazines in the, in the uh, state that, that also would w welcome photographers submitting? Uh, well, my good friend it works for Texas Highways. Uh, Brandon Yakabai is his name. Uh, that could be a contact. Actually, Texas Co-op. They do a million subscribers, or they give it away a million a year. They're always hungry for fee uh, uh, Her name is Susie Sands, I believe. She's always looking for good content. So um, that's one way to do it. Um, so y'all just, you're wanting to get your stuff published. Is that, is that, that y'all want to do, or some of y'all looking forward to doing? Yeah, well, you have my card. Do me a favor. Um, I probably will be doing workshops in the future if y'all want to like me on Facebook or something like that or Instagram. So when I start doing workshops, if y'all want to join me on some stuff, I'm happy to go over that with you. Uh, we can do that later. But, um, but by all means, I mean, I, I mean Sonia, Sonia Summerfeld is the one you talk to to get in the magazine. So she's the photo editor. We struggled for about five years because her shooting style was different than me. She came from Paris and she was a fashion photographer and she likes things that way, and I'm more Texas Highways traditional, and so 
I made, honestly, I'd submit like 30 images from a shoot. And she goes, well, I'm not sure about these. And then I'd give her everything I rejected, and she wanted those. <laughs> literally, literally. And I'm thinking, it's out of focus, and it has a sun glare going through here. That's what I want. I said, well, she's, I'm, I'm training her. She's still a work in process. <laughs> she's young. <laughs> I know. <laughs> exactly. We, we, we now appreciate each other. We finally have a, a, a bond. Well, go ahead. My drone? My drone. Oh, your drone. I thought drone. I was thinking. A drone. He spent too much time in East Texas. No, I mean, I'm lucky. They, I have a brand new uh, Tahoe that I keep with me at full time. So when I get that emergency phone call and say, you need to be somewhere right away, um, I'm, 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 I usually have a three day grab bag with me. It's just in case I need to go somewhere. Um, which I don't right now. Are you married? I am. Wow. Uh, our kids are out of college. They don't care. So, so no. I'm not gone. Though. Actually, I'm gone only about 30% of the time. It's not as much as I just need to be flexible. But um, I haven't traveled anywhere in the last month. It's been too hot. You know, and I've looked at the editorial calendar and I go, well, I, I can wait. You know, I'll figure it out. You know, uh, but starting September and October and November, my schedule is really starting to fill up. So, what, ca what camera is that that you're using? It's uh, the <laughs> Don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. Well, thank you all for having me. Um, by all means, take whatever magazines you want. Um, there is a couple of these hanging around, the 100-year issue. Uh, this is the State Park Guide if you need to know where you're going. But everything's on. Uh, just so you know, our magazine is online past issues, so if you ever want to go back and without, I mean, I do want you to support the magazine, of course, but um, you can go back and look at previous articles and, and stuff of that nature. But we are doing photo um, contests currently right now, and there are prizes from HEB because we've sponsored with HEB. Texas Parks and Wildlife and HEB have sponsored, they're, they're together so doing the sell, uh, a couple different things. So I don't know, y'all, anybody uh, go to the HEB off Gattis School Road in 130 by chance? So well, if you go to HEB, a lot of times you may see some um, support Texas Parks and Wildlife banners and stuff. Uh, some of that's my imagery and we, that they, they donated a million dollars worth of stuff to help support state parks. So, but there is an ongoing state park contest, a photography contest that's going out every quarter. And I don't know what the prize package is for this month, but it's something, and we do put those in the magazine as well. Maybe that Z9 one. No, yeah, I need a, <laughs> Yeah, I, I need one. And then, um, what else I was gonna tell you that I forget about? Um, yeah, we just we reached 100,000 followers on our YouTube channel. We're at a million, I think, right now on Facebook or close to it. I remember in 2008, the, one of our IT guys come up to me and came up to me and he said, um, "There's this Facebook thing. You want to? Don't you think we need to start one?" I go, "Sure, let's let's do it." So I started just doing a picture of the day, and now, and, he, and then we got like 5,000 people really quick. And I, and I went to our director at the time. I said, uh, "This is getting legs. I can't really handle this." And now we have over a hundred social media sites. We have a social media director. We have a social media awareness team. Uh, you know, we're on every type of media other than TikTok uh, out there. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big aspect of what we do. So, uh, and, and that's it, really. Thank you. Thank you. Whew, it's hot. <laughs>